four years you created your own food for us and I can't wait to see where it's at in year 10. Yeah, right? Me too. I'm hoping we'll be walking in full shade by year 10. Yeah. No hats needed. Wow. <laughs> so let's drop down to the uh, dragon fruit row here. So this is my more in industrial style trellis that I've got here. It's um, it's cement or it's a uh, steel cemented into the ground with rebar um, crosses. There's about um, well, right now I just took two varieties off the trellis because they weren't my favorite, and we'll be replacing those two. Um, but this trellis holds 18 varieties. I got 42 on the whole farm, and. Yeah, we've definitely narrowed down which are our favorites through tasting all these varieties. Um, dragon fruits are one of those things that uh, there's a lot of subpar varieties and there's a lot of really incredible ones that people don't ever really get to taste generally because they're not as productive as the other ones. So mm. in a commercial situation, people aren't going to be growing these really high quality, tasty ones. Um, they want to get as many fruits as possible so they can make as much money as possible. It seems like they want to get the biggest one possible. And the big heavy ones too, for sure. Um, but in my situation, I'm looking for the unique stuff. Um, so yeah, we have that opportunity to grow out all this different stuff and try to find our favorites. And I'll cut right now to the little harvest we did yesterday so folks can see some of the varieties you were harvesting. Nice. And your tips for harvesting them. For sure. What is this one? Uh, this variety? I think it's Zan Marino. <laughs> Gotta check the... Dan Marino? <laughs> Zan Marino. <laughs> yeah, Zan Marino. Cool. And just uh, maybe a brief, what's the secret of growing the fruit here on these trellises Ready? you got? Uh, the key to dragon fruit is trellising them properly so by the time they get heavy and are productive, they don't pull the whatever structure they're on down. Mm. Um, so right here I've got, uh, got rebar. steel posts cemented into the ground with rebar. Um, dragon fruit need a subtropical, tropical climate. In order to fruit well, they definitely need to be dry and stressed mm. uh, and not over fertilized. Mm. I've got about 42 varieties on the farm, I believe. Wow, and I, I'm gonna get this row behind you. It's yeah. pretty cool. 42 varieties. Yeah. This one's got an epic color. It's got a really deep red pigment. Wow. That's almost like purple, like a, like a Martian alien. Yeah, red purple. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, they're saying this is not their favorite variety, but this is better than anything I've ever had before. It's really good. Mm. You got right. a different variety of dragon fruit here. Yeah, so this variety right here, uh, I forgot the name of this one. It's a yellow one, super sweet variety. And then the red one over here, we call Frankie's Red. Um, I'm not sure if it's the one that was collected by Tim Plowman uh, in Ecuador a bunch of years ago. It might be that one, but it might have a different name by now, Frankie's Red. But the, they have thorns on the outside of the fruit and the trick to harvesting them is to use a paintbrush and wipe the thorns off before trying to handle it. Wow. talking about dragon eggs earlier. This one totally looks like a dragon egg. Yeah. Wow, awesome. So tell me the name of this one again. Uh, Frankie's Red. Frankie's Red. Whoa, it's really juicy. If you tap it. Wow, that one's awesome. I mean, they look like cactus trees, really, dragon the way eggs. that you've trellised them. Dragon eggs, right? Totally. That weren't you calling the Rolinias dragon eggs yesterday? Yeah? The Rolinias look like Game of Thrones eggs. Yeah, something, right? They're both eggish. Rolf Sapote was collected by Bill Whitman in Costa Rica, I believe, um, by a gentleman who was growing the tree named Ross. And the scions came from Ross's yard, so that's where the name comes from. But uh, it's just like egg fruit. You can see the little fruit right there and all the ones up there. They kind of come in a little bit of a cluster. 
opposed to egg fruits, which are more individual. Um, real similar in taste, just a bit smaller. Nice. And over here is like your, almost like your dragon fruit nursery. Yeah. So here we got the veggie garden in, in the greenhouse mm. and a couple new varieties of dragon fruit set up. This little trellis I got set up here is what, what is it, and this is good for everybody back on the mainland. This is called uh, what I call the Home Depot trellis. All these parts of fencing you see here, you can get it at Home Depot probably. It's like electro conduit or something? Or? Uh, it's just fence post pipe oh, and stuff. It is pipe. Yeah, it's fence post pipe banged in and then I did the horizontals with it as well. Um, so anybody could make this from Home Depot. You know, you don't need concrete, like mixing and all that kind of stuff or steel and welding and rebar. You can literally just pound these in and make something like this from mm. Home Depot. Here's the cotton plant. This is a big cotton plant. This is a cottontail rabbit. A lucky rabbit's tail right here. <laughs> yeah, why kill the rabbit when you can grow a cotton plant? Right. So the kids use these to stuff, um, actually the foxtail for their Halloween costume this year. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was actually perfect as well as you can kind of just go right in there, clean your ears with it. Good to go. Nice. So you're growing your own Halloween costumes. Halloween costumes and <laughs> Q-tips. And the flowers are pretty cool. Yeah, real pretty. Let me get that one there. Hold it. There, perfect. Nice. And look at before it opens. They're really cool looking too, actually. It's like a big roselle. Like. Mm. This is just a, a common ornamental plant that I actually had a passion for before tropicals, uh, tropical fruits that is, um, and I collected a lot of these. So I've been interplanting these into the system now just because I still love them. This one's called a red bone, it's a kind of collector's one where it's got this red bone in the center of the leaf right there. It's pretty different. Wow. That one's called kiwi. But they're really pretty plants and they propagate really easily so they're fun to fun to produce. Nice. Oh it's just kinda like maybe a couple of sisters here to show. Cool. Just because they're loaded. This is just one of uh one of many citrus varieties on the farm. We've got loads of citrus, um, different varieties, uh, you know, from lemons, limes, pomelos, grapefruits, tangerines, um, Clementines, did I say that? Um, finger limes, all kinds of different citrus on the farm. I think this variety is dancy. Uh, it's a nice variety. I find that citrus uh, gets better with age. As the root system gets bigger, it's definitely able to produce more sugars and stuff. So if your citrus isn't great in your first season, give it time. Feed it more calcium as well. Mm. Good tip. Yeah. Nice. How long have you been full vegan for? About seven years. Wow, I think that the veganism in your diet helps your gardening? It definitely helps the passion because with the lack of all the other foods that you're not going to be eating, you start to look for other things more like fruits and vegetables obviously are going to be increased. So um, here in the tropics, especially with this much uh, tropical fruit being limited um, through green markets and stuff, you got to assess it out yourself. So. Unless you're growing it, you're gonna be, you know, find yourself shopping at the green markets to hunt for everything with everybody else. So, grow it yourself, and you can grow so much more and um, for cheaper, cheaper and and more diverse and stuff. And it's priceless to be able to bring people and show them this, and it's a worldly collection of tropical fruits to bring people to and give them that experience all in one day is um, quite a unique thing, you know. So it could be life changing for a lot of people. Could be. Open sure. their eyes, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. A lot of people walk away from walking around here with like a wow factor, for sure. Nice. Thank you guys for coming and checking it out. It's great what you're doing. I mean, I'm super impressed and I'm going to say it here. I don't care who's garden I've been to in the past. This is my favorite one I've ever seen. Thank you. I'm not even going to be joking. I <laughs> appreciate it. So I'll come back anytime and uh, if I ever move to uh, British Columbia again, I would love to try to capture even one tenth of what you have here. Uh, I'm going to come up and help you. Okay. For sure. Deal. You're always welcome back. 
Well, follow this guy on his Instagram, Aloha Honeybee. And um, if you guys comment down below, hopefully whenever I'm in Kauai, I can come by and do a, a different season tour or an update. For sure. That'd be great. Love cool, it. Cool, man.